Greetings, friend. I'm going to show you how to solve this puzzle by my Friday featured setter using a Sudoku Firework. Not only that, I'm going to give you a couple other advanced strategies you got to know in order to finish this solve. And I have some great fun facts about Audish that I'm going to share with you a little bit later. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Well, you might notice there's 37 givens. You think this might be an easy puzzle, but it is not. You could even go here and go, hey, there's a fully filled out, the fist of fell ring. I could maybe make some eliminations in these squares out here. And you can make some uh, eliminations, but it's not going to help you solve or crack this puzzle. Here's how you can do it. First, you start with these sixes. Two sixes in those columns means that has to be a six. Work your way up column six here. You got a two and a seven remaining because of this seven. That's a two. That's the seven, and that's going to be your two. All right. Let's check out these ones here. You got this one cutting down. You got this one cutting across. That's got to be a one. And now with these two ones, and this one, that's got to be a one as well. And then you can see with this nine coming up, the column, this nine cutting across, you can solve for a nine here. Okay, let's focus here on column three. I do what's called my neat naked triple trick. You're looking for a three, six, seven. I see a six and a seven in this block looking at this cell. And then the six is repeated looking at this cell. That means we can solve all three of those cells because this has to be the three, this has to be the seven, and that's gotta be your six. Looking good. Now, to find the next cell to solve, it's going to be a little tricky. We got to find the advanced strategy here that Audish had placed for you and hope you can find. But before we do that, let's do a little bit of cleanup. All right, we got this nine cutting across, which means nines are limited to those two cells. And this becomes a pointing pair. A uh, pointing pair means that since the nines have to be somewhere here in block eight and are limited to row eight, a nine can't be anywhere else across the row. And then this notation is called Snyder notation. Anytime a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate. Mark it. And in case you solve one of the cells, you can solve the other right away. Other things I'm going to do for Snyder notation, you notice this contains a three, six, seven. And since the three cuts across, the threes are limited now in block six in column eight. So that means the threes are also a pointing pair. This will come in handy a little bit later. Okay, we've done all of our little setup. Now, what can we do to get a good solve here? And what you have to do is focus across row one and column nine. You might notice that Audish put these extra digits here in the columns and rows, and that is what's going to lead us to our next solve. Notice that a two, three, and five cannot be in this cell. And then a two, three, five cannot be in this cell because it is two, three, five. So it limits where two, three, five can be across row one and column nine. So let's look at that. If they can't be here, this cell could be a two, four, or a five. And let's say, you know, the, could this be a four? Or does it have to be a two or five? And what you want to notice is if this was a four, then the two, three, five will be limited to a naked triple right here because they can't be in this cell. And now this is going to create a little bit of a problem. And the problem is where can the two, three, five go now in column nine? If that was a four, one of the two, three, five could go right there. But it can't be in these two spots because this is a naked triple. It fills out the block. Can't be here because of this two, three, five. So the other one of those could be right here. So you could have a two, three, five right there. You could have one of the two, one, two, three, five right here, but you have no place to put that third two, three, five. This is awesome. This is called a Sudoku firework. And basically what the firework does is it creates this restriction in the block and so that you have to have at least one of these cans outside the block. So in this case, this cannot be a or. I featured Sudoku fireworks in some of my videos before. If you stay around to the end, I'll give you a link to a 
great puzzle that I solved using a firework in a little bit different way than what you're seeing now. But I wanted to show this. This is great stuff. And these amazing techniques and strategies that setters like Audish use are also available in my Sudoku reward puzzle packs through my Buy Me a Coffee page. Click on the pinned comment below to join the Smarty Party, get those exclusive packs, and you will solve Sudoku even better. Before we move on to see how this is going to help us out, because what we figured out is that this cell cannot contain a four. I do want to share my fun fact about Audish. I asked Audish, what got you into setting Sudoku puzzles? Audish said, I've been familiar with Sudoku for a pretty long time. Did them as a kid. Wasn't an expert, but still knew how to do X-Wings and Y-Wings. I call them XY wings, but that's still pretty good as a kid. He stopped solving for a while until COVID time. He started watching Cracking the Cryptic. Got really interested in variant Sudoku. Spent a couple years thinking about it. And then he really started to want to make his own. And so now he's starting to set his own puzzles. And these are fantastic. I, I love featuring your puzzles, Audish. And I can't wait to show the rest of this solve to my viewers. Okay, because that can be a four anymore, we're going to four B now in column one. Can't be here because of that four. Can't be here because of that four, and it can't be here because of that four. So this has to be your four now. And you might think, oh, the hard part's over. We found the firework. Nope. We still got a couple of advanced strategies, a couple of tricks up on your sleeve that you need to figure out if you want to get through this puzzle. But it's important that you put the four right there because now it's going to limit where some of the candidates can be. If we look across row one, you notice that we have a one, six, seven, eight. So we need a two, three, four, five, and a nine. We can trim that down quite a bit. That can't be a four, nine. Because of this pointing pair of threes and this nine, that can't be a three or nine. And then this can't be a two, four, or a five. And in here, you can't have the two, three, or five. All right, you're like, what's the big deal, Timberlake? Why did you do all that? Well, we need to trim out one more of these candidates to get some solving. Let's look at the candidate twos. We have a lot of twos in here. Where can they go in this puzzle? Well, as of right now, they can go here and here. They can go in these spots. They can go here. And they can go here. Okay. So we see where all the twos can go. You might notice is that there's a conjugate pair of twos in column one. Conjugate means there's only two possibilities. So either a two's here, if it's not here, it's got to be there. And so that's a conjugate means that they play off of each other. When you have two of a candidate in a house like this, they are considered a conjugate pair. You also also notice you look across row eight, you have a conjugate pair of twos right here. So either a two's here or it's got to be there. This is going to help us out and we're going to be able to make elimination so what you notice let's say there's a two right there if this is a two any cell that see this can't be a two so anything across a row one or within the block cannot be a two if this is not a two then this cell would have to be a two this can't be a two and then that cell would be a two so either this cell is a two or it's not a two if it's a two anything that sees it can't be a two if it's not a two it forces a two over here into this cell. And this is called a two string kite. Whenever you have two of a conjugate pair, you got one in the block and one outside the block. You go over here, same thing, one in the block, one outside the block, creates this restriction of where a two has to be one of these orange cells now. And I'm gonna make a, some uh, eliminations here to get rid of what I had marked. If you want to learn more about two-string kites, check out my two-string kite tutorial. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies, and you will solve two-string kites even better. We'll remove all the colors, because what it means is since we had the twos here in one of those orange squares, this cell can no longer be a two because it sees both of them. So that, that is a four, five. And that was the key of making that two-string kite. You know, like, what's the big deal, Tim? Like, what do we care about four or five there? Well, if we look right here and figure out what this cell can be, it can't be a one, two, three, four, and it can't be a seven, eight, or nine. It's got to be a five or a six. Okay. If you look over here, you got a two, 
four five to finish out block one. So this has got to be a four five, and this has got to be a two four because of the two and the five that are right there. Okay, this cell and this cell are both a four five by value cell BVC I like to call. And what's interesting about them is you'll notice that one is in one a row one in block three. And then this other BVC is in row two in block one. So in the same three by three band in different rows in different blocks. So what you want to do is look over here in this third row, third block of the band. You notice how it can be a five because there's a five right there, but there's no four. There's no possibility for a four in that third row. And so if we try to put a four in both of these cells, Where would you be able to put a four here in block two? Because that would be a nine now. Can't be here, can't be here, and it can't be there. You'd break the puzzle. So what we know is that one of these cells has to be a five. At least one of them has to be a five. If that's the case, then we can eliminate a five from any cell that sees both of these orange cells. This is a Sudoku W-wing delta variant is what we found here. And what it allows us to do is eliminate fives from any cell that sees a two orange. So we can eliminate a five from right here, and we can eliminate a five from right here because it saw these two orange cells. You can eliminate a five from right here, but you are not gonna need to do that elimination right now. This is awesome stuff. And you see how that two string kite allowed us to set up this BVC, allowed us to set up the W wing. And now we're gonna make some more great solving. Check out this tutorial if you want to learn more about W wings. And while you're at it, share this with someone you know and see if they can solve this puzzle and they find these types of strategies. All right, we've eliminated the colors. I'm going to solve this for a six now. I'm going to solve this for two. What else can we do? Now we have the two here. That's got to be a four. That's got to be a five. Okay, and with this six, now and this six, you can solve this for a six, which displaces that Snyder three allows us to solve and finish block six with a seven and now let's look over here we have a full house and so it looks like there's only one candidate missing in row four so it has to be a six same thing another full house right here means this has to be a three and then we have a seven and a nine i got my seven here so here's your seven here's your nine we're missing a three and we're missing a five i got my three right here so here's your three and here's your five. This is three in the corner, uh, done in Sudoku pad. It's something that Simon Anthony likes to say about uh, that's three in the corner versus that's me in the corner from losing my religion. All righty, we're gonna go across row seven, eight or nine, because the nine is right there in block nine already. And we know that's the nine, that's gotta be the eight. And with these two eights, this has to be an eight. After this eight, since you have the nine right there, the only place left for a nine is right here in row one. So that means that's got to be a four. That's your five. And that's going to be another three in the corner. All right. Double three in the corner. Love it. Go down column seven here and finish out. Looks like we still need another three. And then we got two and a five. I got my five there. So here's your two. There's your five. Awesome. And now we can solve for the two right here. So you see the two, three, Three, five are here, and the two is there. Then you had a five here and a two there. That's how we worked it out. One of those digits had to be in that corner to make it all work. All right, we're looking for four, seven to finish up block three. So there's your four, and there's your seven. Come down here, we need a two and an eight. I got my two here, so here's a two. Here's your eight, and this eight, and this eight means this has to be an eight right there. It means this has to be a nine to finish row nine. This has got to be a 1, that's got to be a 9, which displaces the Snyder 9. We solve this cell for a 9, and our last digit is a 5. Check out this other video if you want to learn more about how to solve Sudoku Fireworks. Thank you so much, Audis, for being my Friday featured setter. I can't wait to show more of these great puzzles. Please consider supporting me through the Buy Me a Coffee page. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching.